Welcome to our new webinar, Your Flexible IT Infrastructure with OpenCurem Enterprise. I'm Candy Picono, CEO of OpenCurem Enterprise, and with me today again is Matt Leschenburg, founder and senior tech advisor for OpenCurem Enterprise. Hello. So we'll just jump into the presentation quickly. Our agenda for today, we have several points. Today we're going to just go through the flexibility of OpenCurem Enterprise, and look at the framework, we're going to look at some of the diagrams, how OpenCurem Enterprise works, and we're going to go through some videos that we pre-recorded. So I'm happy to pass on to Matt. Have fun with our webinar today. Thank you. Hello, this is Matt Rashenburg. As you see on the agenda, there are quite some points we will go through in this webinar. So I would like to show you lots of different features and a convergent solution for managing IT infrastructure automated based on OpenCurem. First, this is the base diagram of how OpenCurem technically works. It shows your data center, cloud portal, which are the two different entry points of OpenCurem. And in the middle, OpenCurem providing the plugin API for different technologies and also hybrid cloud connectors and uh, virtualization connectors for different virtualization technologies, which you can just plug in into OpenCRM by enabling one of the modules and managing your specific technology you would like to have for your infrastructure, you prefer for your data center with OpenCRM and automate it in the same way. The cloud portal is the front end for the end users for full automation server deployment, which is administrated, provided by your data center, which is the other side of OpenCRM and administration, a full administration suite for all different tasks, which we have put into the right automation aspect. So for every server object, there are different things which you can configure, which uh, you can connect plugin services to that. This is part of the later videos we will go through. This is a bit more detailed in the diagram of how OpenCRM Enterprise's technical architecture. So we have different abstraction layers which uh, allow us to import or to use different technologies by the same actions, by the same administration actions. So the, the, the workflow of creating a server or creating a different service in OpenCRM is independent from the underlying virtualization technology or storage technology. It's, it's one single workflow which just maps the different action to different technologies which are then executed on behalf of the plugin API by the different technology plugins. So on the left side, you see the storage obstruction layer. We basically can use any type of storage, any type of enterprise storage for your data center storage infrastructure which is then connected to your virtualization infrastructure normally. That uh, means to different hypervisors like VMware, ESX, I, or uh, VMware vSphere, or KVM, or even physical systems. So, so one of the main differences between other virtualization products or projects or cloud projects is that OpenCRM is not only focused on virtualization, but we have the same services and the same actions and capabilities also for physical systems. So we recommend to our users and customers to build up the initial infrastructure for OpenCRM, like the, the virtualization host and also the storage systems by OpenCRM itself so that they are deployed automatically. Because in this way, we have the whole environment staying scalable at any point. Difference is we're not only focused on virtualization, virtual machines on, on of any type, but we can also do the same with physical machines. And this is also true for the cloud portal, which means also the end users, if you have configured it that way, can request physical systems from OpenCRM Cloud, and they will be provisioned on the operating system on a physical system of their choice, including the operating system and the application deployment and other configuration. The first video I would like to show you is, is about the OpenCRM Enterprise Dashboard, which gives you a brief overview of what happened, what is happening in your data center. For example, all the events which is currently executed or which are currently happening, the different types of service and storage and so on. This is the server overview where a server in OpenCRM is basically a logical object where you can put configuration data or configuration items through. It's 
consists of a uh, resource, that's what we just saw, and an image. And an image is always connected or mapped, stored on a storage server. So these are the main points of the base in OpenQM. There's also kernels, which is used for automatic installations and PXE boot deployment where you have uh, remote root file systems. This is a view about the available plugins in the OpenQM Enterprise, which are over 50 different technologies integrated in a hyper convergent way to seamlessly provide the capabilities of the different technologies within OpenQRM within the framework. So the next video is about uh, how easy it is and how standardized it is to create a new server. There's a simple wizard which allows the administrator to create any type of virtual machine or also deploy operating systems on physical machines. Like here in this example, you see just the complete overview of possibilities. Okay. And we select the KVM virtual machine, and we select a host for the virtual machine. And this brings us basically to the create virtual machine form where all different configurations items for the virtual machine are configured. You can easily add a different a new network interface or connect it to different bridges. There's also a built-in file picker, which allows you to easily select installation mediums for uh, installing the virtual machine from an ISO image, for example. Here we pick the Ubuntu system and configure a VNC, VNC access. You can easily show the password to uh, copy and paste it. And creating the virtual machine brings you to the next step in the server create wizard, which is to select or create a new virtual machine image for this specific type of virtual machine technology. So it had created a new resource now. We simply use it. And we want to create a new image for that. There's also then the option to choose different storage types for the specific virtualization type. And this, in this example, we choose an LVM image. So we select the volume group here and then create a new logical volume to be uh, mapped to the virtual machine we just created before, which is all part of the later server object where we can just throw in a different other configuration items like monitoring, documentation, high availability, secure shell access or VNC access and so on. So the image is created now. We just select it's empty. The virtual machine boot will boot from the ISO image. We can also uh, set uh, an image password, which is then overwriting the installation password. We could also attach network installation by the automatic installation select box. So now the image is the service created, and the only thing next to do is start it, and deployment will begin. Okay, you see the resource is now in transaction. That means the service started, the virtual machine is started, and will now start the installation we just configured. And this is the next video here. We have easy VNC access to the virtual machine console via the built-in no VNC plugin. For that, we should remember the VNC password for the virtual machine which is also shown in the virtual machine list. So you can unhide the password to copy and paste it, and then ac easily access the VNC console of the virtual machine to actually start the installation procedure. We just cut and paste the password, and now the installation is started, we see. And uh, we just can regular install this operating system or any operating system on this virtual machine. The installation is really, really started now. There's no need to follow the whole installation procedure, you will notice. Going on to the next video is the first additional feature next to full automatic deployment, which can be attached to any kind of server object. It's IP management, so we have built a module which allows you to easily configure and also document IP addresses for any type of virtualization or any type of physical machine. Simply choose the server configuration, and this one has one network card. 
We simply can select an IP address from a predefined pool. And this IP address will be applied to the system either directly or on the next boot app. This is an overview about the pre-created networks. And it's very easy also to, to add a new network, which is part of the next video i show you here. So to add additional networks to the IP management plugin, you simply configure the network with your configuration parameters like the subnet mask and the uh, network name. You can configure any type of IP address block. So it, it can be a full class C network or class B network, but it can also just be a smaller block of IP addresses within a class C subnet, which is then treated as a dedicated network and open QRM which is also assignable to cloud, cloud users. It means the OpenQM Cloud has an uh, interface to the IP management network, where the user is then able to select IP addresses on behalf of its own mapped pool or its user group. So here we just create a new network called My Network with the VLAN ID5. So also the VLAN mapping for virtual machines is fully automated and transparent for the user. I simply syntax error. <laughs> I gave the broad, uh, broadcast IP as last IP, so don't worry. And this creates a new network in OpenQRM, in this example, uh, based on VLAN 5. And here we see the pool of IP addresses available. OK, next feature is application deployment. We have also an abstraction layer built in for application deployment, which is currently supported by uh, Ansible and Puppet. We show you the Puppet application deployment now. So simply, when you edit the server, you can select Puppet, and then you can select the predefined application groups, which is also in the responsibility of the administrator. Oh. The predefined application groups we bring in, it's a good first start. But of course, you may have already a Puppet or Ansible infrastructure. And it's very easy to simply import this into OpenCam Enterprise, into OpenCam Server. And then each of your application or recipes will become selectable in this checkbox list for the administrator and also be available as a cloud product. So you can also charge for it via the private cloud. This is then also available in the uh, OpenCM Cloud uh, as application product. So you can simply define your recipe as a cloud product. And uh, if the user selects it for its automatic virtual machine deployment, then the user will ultimately be charged for it. Next is SSH term. The web SSH term is brought to you by uh, the SSH term plugin. And it simply interfaces with a button in the main server list. So you can use it to easily get SSH access within your web browser to any of your deployment systems. Next point is automatic high availability. We know that for many of our customers, high availability is a very critical and important point. We have built in high availability in OpenCM on infrastructure level. That means uh, for us, high availability is a simple checkbox which is enabled or disabled for a specific server, which needs to be kept running under any circumstances. As you see, we have just enabled high availability for the previous created My Server. You can also set a timeout there, and OpenCam then automatically will care about keeping this system running. Next on the list for features for your IT infrastructure, uh, documentation and monitoring, different Plugins available for system statistics and service monitoring. One is the Collect D plugin, which provides you a nice overview about what's going on. And the other is Nagios, which is also a Jinga compatible and which allows you to create service checks and system checks. The other monitoring system shown here is Nagios integration, which is also compatible with the new Jinga. It allows you to easily create service checks and system checks for your virtual and physical machines. To configure service monitoring, we also made it very easy. So uh, for example, the Nagios plugin, it's very easy to add additional service check for a specific server. First, we create the service check itself by selecting a specific port, for example. And this can then be assigned to 
any server in OpenQRM. And by selecting it for a specific server, it will be automatically applied to your Nagios configuration. So after that, the new service check is configured in your Nagios. Next, I would like to show you the HyperCloud integration on the example of Amazon EC2. We have just completely reworked the Amazon EC2 integration and added a large set of great features. So here, how simple it is to create a new Amazon instance in your data center. This time, we would like to have a Windows server running on Amazon. So we just give a name and some comment. Creating a new instance, it should be an instance of type EC2. Then we create the instance on behalf of a specific Amazon account. You can have several Amazon accounts configured, if you like. Here are the options for the instance configuration. So it should be a Windows server, or it can be a small one. And we can set the availability zone and subnets, plus the keeper, which is used to access the virtual machine. There's also a configuration script, which you can attach to the Amazon instance, which is then being used as the user data to pre-configure certain specific parameters or aspects of your virtual machine on Amazon. So we are still in the server wizard. We select our new created instance on Amazon. So next step, the configured AMI we would like to have. Additional image configuration, such as a specific password and the image version, like it's Windows. This brings us to the final step, like the service created now. And when we start the server, the instance will become ready on Amazon EC2. OK. See, it started now and fully active. Coming to the next slide, it's the private cloud feature of OpenQRM. Everything what I just showed you was the administrative side of OpenQRM. And we have our end user side for a cloud portal in OpenQM, which has a separated user and project management, as you, as you just saw. So logging into that makes all the different kinds of actions and deployment steps, configuration management systems, and application deployment also available as a complete self-source for end users. That means we select an EC2 instance, a Linux system there with a specific application configuration. An included billing system will tell you and the user what it's going to be charged for the system. Requesting the system from the OpenCam Cloud will directly and quickly deploy this on Amazon EC2 in this case. But it can also be your KVM virtualization backend infrastructure, a vSphere environment, or any type of virtualization supported by OpenCRM. So many thanks for that. That was the webinar, Your Flexible Infrastructure with OpenCRM. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Thank you.